Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the New York School and Design Didax podcast. Our guest today is Alexia Mathieu. Welcome, Alexia. Hi, hello. Fantastic to have you here. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Tell us about you and your work. Yeah, so um, I am a designer strategist and I'm also the head of a program called Masters Media Design at the uh, Heart Art and Design University here in Geneva. I have, uh, I'll say, a really multidisciplinary background. My, I guess my uh, career is a bit unusual because I have a bachelor's in textile design, you know, really learning about the craft of weaving, and then I have a master's in uh, um, textile futures from St. Rosa Martins in the UK, where we, you know, learn how to use speculative design and materials to prototype alternative futures, I guess. And then I built my career in um, strategy for connected products, services, so really, you know, diving into user research, um, but also, you know, mixing design with business and also understanding, um, well, how we use technology every day and our relationship to it. So I worked in London, in Boulder, Colorado, in the U.S., as well as in San Francisco. And then I am I'm now I'm back in Geneva since uh, 2017. But what really passionate me is really to understand the relationship we build with our devices and how does that impact our everyday life, our intimate lives. So this is really what um, guides my, my work. But I, I'm also working on, um, on the, actually a research project right now on digital fashion. So, you know, the type of like what type of new interaction we could create with um, digital clothes. So really about around, you know, like how we, uh, let's say you're in a video game and you have to buy a skin or clothes, you know, like, or you, are, you go on metaverse. I'm really thinking about what's happening in fashion right now. It's really interesting merging technology, fashion, and also interaction. So um, it's really a space I'm going to explore more and more. Uh, I'm submitting the project in October. It's going to start next year, but I'm kind of building the, the proposal right now. Ah. Um, um, so yeah, so this is what I'm, I'm, I'm kind of working on, on the side uh, of also leading the course, which is like my main activity at the moment. <laughs> you actually answered my next question. So this, this is the, the, your latest project. Yeah, it is. It is my latest project. Um, I'm also uh, on the side. I'm really, you know, thinking about um, how can we teach machine learning in the context of a design course. So this is also something I'm doing, uh, where I'm interviewing uh, designers, educators, artists who work with machine learning to understand how can we use this tool. Um, you know, like what type of ethical questions are raised, but also how can we use it as a, as a creative tool? So that's also something I'm working on, but it's more like a personal project just for me to understand how can we also use that in, um, in our master's program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, very, very interesting. We're going to get to that because uh, we've been exploring on Design Education Forum. Uh, last year we had an AI panel and this year we have uh, creativity without a computer education in the age of AI. So that'll be fantastic for you to to send something or to record something for us. Be, so it's very, very topical. Uh, yeah, yeah. On that. Fantastic. So how did you get into teaching? Um, well, it was kind of, uh, after I never really planned on becoming a teacher. It, uh -huh. it was not something I thought I would be doing. Um, I think I, well, I, I was in San Francisco really, you know, helping startup developing their strategy and, and helping them, you know, um, uh, developing also the type of connected product they wanted to have or services, you know, helping them thinking about the experience they wanted to have or, or you know, with, that people wanted, could have with the product. And I came back to Geneva because this is where I'm, where I'm, I'm, I'm from. I mean, I'm from the, the French border, but mm -hmm. right at the border. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I just, you know, wanted to meet new people here and try to make connection. And I kind of um, was invited at the, uh, at the, Head, so the the we, we say head is the um, the art and uh, you know design and art. Uh, sorry, the University of Art and Design Geneva, and I was invited for a jury uh -huh. uh, in this program called Media Design. And here I got to meet the team, which is a great team. Um, and uh, actually, the place to lead the course opened. I sent my application, but I never thought you know that would be selected. I would, it was kind of which just my contact at first, and and now I, it's been a great challenge. You know, it's been four years. I think the, when I arrived, the course really needed to be 
Uh, it was a great course, but I think we needed to kind of reshift some, some topic, you know, we think about the big question we wanted to address, also to renew the type of tools we were teaching. So it, it's been a great challenge to rethink about those big contemporary questions you know, linked to interaction design. And, um, and we actually have two big themes that we are exploring. The first one is, um, uh, well, we call it technoscape, you know, it's just, it's just a word, but just a way to say that we really want to think about, you know, interaction design and technology and its impact on the environment. Because, right. you know, w w when you are interaction designer or media designer, you really have this paradox that you have to deal with, which is be innovative, create new things, you know, like think about this, but at the same time, you know, you, you need to think about the environment and the impact that those practices and those tools have on, mm -hmm. on our planet. So what, how do you deal with this paradox as a designer? What does, you know, what type of um, new um, tools can, be, can we be teaching? But also what does it mean to create an interface or service that is uh, responsible for our planet? You know, that is, that kind of have a low impact as much as you can. Um, and then the second one is uh, AI culture. So it's really investigating the impact of um, AI and machine learning on the contemporary cultures of design um, and how we can use this as a, as a creative tool. So we, this is kind of like the main two themes. And then we have something else also that we love to explore. It's around narration. So we also, we do teach, um, and I'll say how to, you know, like the new form of, of narration in, uh, in the mobile age, basically, you know, with the, how can you imagine new type of uh, storytelling format? It could be through objects, it could be um, uh, through um, interfaces, but also not necessarily, you know, like programming, but also like doing this with simple tools such as Twine or uh bitly you know like little tools that helps you like prototype a narration really quickly and um, without necessarily having to use like big uh software for, for like cinema 4d or even to learn like big programming languages so mm. this is this is basically kind of the the positioning of the course and this is what i've been developing for the the past four years and i've been working with great people you know and, and a great team of teachers they all have their own specialty um so yeah in a, in a nutshell this is this is uh what i, I mean you can use a, a storyboard yeah <laughs> what, what what do you mean by that you use a storyboard to tell well, the, the simpler, story the simpler the tools you know yeah everything starts from the storyboard yeah everything starts from the storyboard definitely <laughs> no this is yeah i mean okay well um because i saw i saw on the the on, on, a, on your website that you had this, uh, oh, you know, going back to drawing and going back to the more mm, like physical mm, craft, right? Mm. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, definitely you, the, the, the simple thing is, is the storyboard, but then what's interesting us is how can you put this, how can you translate that with digital tools, you know, like, and I think uh -huh. you, you can do really wonderful Format. I mean, I'm thinking about the work of Anna Entropy, you know, and she really, her, she really advo advocates for people who are not video game professional to really tell the story through digital tools, you know, through Twine, which is really an easy tool. You don't need to know how to program. Yeah. You can just go on the website and play with it. Yeah. So um, it's, this is what really interests us, you know, like, and we ask a lot of questions around what is the story? What is the, you know, what, what would be the intention? Um, and we just did a collaboration with a, a partner here in Geneva where we had to use interactive um, narration to, um, you know, in the context of HIV prevention. Um, you know, like convey a message that maybe goes beyond to, you know, and, and, and a way to diffuse it that could be also like on your on your device that you have every day, your phone or website. But yeah, I, I get it. You know, the story what is definitely the starting point. That is mm, that is mm, for sure. Mm, mm. Fantastic. There, there is there are many paradoxes in this uh, in this day and age with uh, our, our limitations. And uh, one one of the toughest thing is about apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you sort of uh, balance the fact that it's hard to have a physical experience in, in a company right now for, for graduates or for students, and the fact that they also need experience in, in a company? Um, how do we address that in the course, you mean? Uh, I mean, yeah, in the course, yeah. by how would you address it? Yeah, 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 definitely. So um, it is, the, it is, 
I mean, last last has been so hard on 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 the student, and it's been definitely you know difficult to. I mean, they've been really vulnerable and and uh, put in really stressful situations. And um, I think the way, so maybe I answer in two ways: the way we do it in the course, and the way I think you could do it as well. Because um, I, I maybe have my two hats, but uh, <laughs> I think the first one is. Well, what we try to do as much as we can is at least to have a few projects during the year when we collaborate with a professional partner. So, for example, you know, we, we collaborated with this NGO and the students were really forefront in, you know, developing the project and really talking to the, the, the professional and really being in a situation of having a brief and solving an issue, solving a problem. Like, yeah. how, you know, because I think sometimes, like now, the design community is not really happy when you say, you know, you have to solve an issue, but this is what design is about at this core, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's not, it's not necessarily a, a, a bad thing. Um, and then the, the way I, I would do it for, for the students today is the, the advice I guess I, I will give them is to, to don't be afraid to, to, to develop your presence online, you know, like to maybe like keep on publishing your work, yeah. even if it's not finished, you know, I think it's really important that you, that you cultivate your, vo your, your voice. Um, and, and I totally understand, you know, how reach reaching out is so hard. Like I remember when I, when I graduated, how difficult it was. Um, but it's, Sometimes it can be just like a meeting. Don't be afraid to meet people. When I moved back from Geneva, I simply sent an email around. Like I, I didn't, yeah. I didn't have a big position either at the time, and I simply sent an email and generally, you know, ask questions about to people about their work and ask them, you know, like what are you up to? Like go from a curious place to them. Like don't go into, you know, this more like I want something from you, but just try to start a dialogue or say you want to be part of the community. And this is how this is how it could start. But then, when you cannot meet face to face, I think there's a great way right now with the, all the Discord server or the Slack group that you can be part of, and to actually, you know, like engage in the conversation and and don't be shy because, you know, I mean, I think my students they really have amazing point of view and they definitely deserve to be to be shared more. Sure, sure, sure. I was also referring to those skills of working in a company. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, you know, how do the students get the skills of working in a group, but from, a, from the stage of the early, from the early beginnings? Yeah. So, I mean, this is definitely something as a designer, you need to know, right? Because you're yeah. going to collaborate with Absolutely. an engineer, with a programmer, with the, uh, with management, with the marketing team. So this is definitely yeah. something that, um, that you need, you need to needs to be taught and we do teach that and simply that first of all they come from different backgrounds when they yeah. arrive in the course so yeah. they do need to you know get to acquainted to each other and they learn from each other um and then you know like we i i think it goes also from from i, I i'm going to speak from a really specific field here because it's interaction design that i teach in my work so it's not like design in general but the way i will say is that you need to know the basics of of programming for example you need to know what you're talking about like i know programming is difficult and, and it's often something that people feel scared about but if you know your basic then you are able to talk to a developer you are, you are able to know what it's possible to be done what is possible to be produced and then your collaboration can you know can can work better um, and it's the same thing with you know working with a sociologist or anthropologist um, so learning learning about all those different practices and how you can incorporate that into your own work. Um, something that we cultivate a lot is the field research. So how do you observe people? Yeah. How do you gather data on the field? How do you ask questions? Um, how to you know, get people to talk and to get the, 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 you know, to find insight that you might feel surprised to find. Um, so to me, it's like, it really goes into the practice of the tool. So in what we teach is, uh, programming, prototyping, you know, electronics. Um, it's going to be, you know, like also everything related to 3D, uh, VR, uh, AR, but not necessarily just the tools, right? Not saying the technicality, but also having a critical mindset around them yeah. and asking yourself, you know, like, why am I using this, this tool? Is really the right one for the project? Do I really need to go into a super production of a 3D game when maybe I could just use Twine and do like an hypertext? interactive narration so to me this it is is this like if you want to get into a field you have to start playing with it and you're you, you know like a lot of our, our students they apply and they say i want to learn 
programming, I wanted of 3D. And actually a lot of them are already doing it by themselves. And I think this is this is just the best way, you know, to, to yeah, get absolutely. started. Absolutely, absolutely. So if if there were no limitations uh, in your in your education, what would you do differently in, in your in your work? Um <clears throat> Well, first of all, it's it's interesting because you know, in education you always have to work with the the constraint of the institution. So yeah, I think but, this but is, let's say let's say there was you didn't have any yeah, constraint. Yeah, definitely. You know, and I think that that's that's a great question to ask. I think first I will I will love to find ways to uh, to make it more um, inclusive and accessible to more people. I mean, I think we we are definitely working on that, but we can always do more. I think I would also try to, I mean, this is maybe something more practical, but I would just get rid of grades. I hate grading design projects. To me, this feels really weird. Um, it's it's something I feel always really uncomfortable, but we have to do it. So I'd rather have find a ways to, I mean, in the course we try to, you know, construct, to, uh, to have an environment where we feel good about criticizing each other's work because, you know, design is, you know, also having those discussions and those asking those hard questions. But for me, I will really try to stop this comparison, stop this kind of like competitive mindset and the grades. Yeah. This is really something I will get rid of. Absolutely. Um, and then, um, and then you know, we always talk about uh, transdisciplinary or you know, like breaking the walls. And then when you actually want to do it in an institution, it's really hard because everyone has their own agenda. And so I would love to find a way for to, to, to have those, those you know, to have those bridges between the different um, different disciplines. Um, and something I will do as well, and maybe it's because it's my own agenda, but I do think that design education in general needs to be more in tune with what's happening digitally. So to me, for example, programming or knowing, you know, the impact of AI on your profession as a designer, I think it's just really important. Either you're a fashion designer or a graphic designer or working in architecture. And I think it's something that is not taught enough. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really not only talking about the, the tool, but also like the critical mindset behind it and what type of questions I might raise for your profession. Um, and um, yeah, and I think I would, the, the, the last the last thing I would also bring back more is this idea as I was talking about um, of observation and getting out of the of the building in itself physically yeah. you know and yeah. being more outside and like we push our students to do the research and it's hard for students you know we tell them oh just reach out to this expert just do that but it's hard for them you know they don't have those connections they don't have those tools to do that we have this is our role to teach them how to do all this all these things so um, to me that would be really something about giving them more those tools about how do you reach out to people? How do you, you know, lead your, your field research? Mm -hmm. And the last one is more related to, uh, maybe it's a bit controversial the way to say it, but we never talk about money. We never talk about actually making a living in design, you know? And I think it's, um, it's there's a lot of precarity in our industry. It's really hard to, you know, to also find your space. And sometimes we tend to avoid those hard questions as um, educators, you know, with, and we, for example, I think having a course on, on the more business side on how you yeah. can manage your money, how you can manage yeah. your, I don't know, really, really practical things that we don't necessarily teach. And I think that's really missing right now. So some, some courses do, and they have been for a very long time. I mean, uh, it, depends, yeah. it depends on the course, but of course, yeah. that, that's absolutely, yes, of course, that's very, that's, uh, that's very, very important. Very important. Well, I, I guess I'm talking from the context I know because, of course, there's so many different design schools and different approaches, but yeah, more else than, yeah. I yeah. mean, business of design and professional development practice uh, is, is, is built into, in, into some courses, but of course, it, it depends on, on, on the course. Um, where can our viewers and listeners find you? Um, well, you can find me on uh, alexamateur.com, you can find me on Instagram, alexamateur as well, and on, on Twitter. But then I think it's great to also check out the great work that um, my students do. Um, it's the, our Instagram handle is uh, at head, head Media Design, and you can also go on the Head Geneva website. That's a very interesting site. That's a very interesting site. <laughs> Any uh, piece of advice, anything you'd like to add? Uh... Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of like goes back to what I was saying to don't be, it always feels kind of general, but I think people, they could, the design industry right now really needs more diverse voices. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, don't be, a don't be afraid to, to share your voice and to, to reach out to people. But also, I think it's really like we, we always talk about this need of positioning yourself as designer. What is your point of view? What is your practice? And I think that's fine. But I think it's also important to not always think about design and to also like build like other interests outside of it. You know, either it's you're really interested in gardening or you're interested in dancing or you're interested in, I don't know, like cooking, whatever. Absolutely. I think it's I think it's really important to build the hobbies and and passion outside of design that will nourish and nurture your practice that's that's fantastic that's fantastic well thank you so much uh for for coming and it's been a very interesting conversation thank you for having me thank you thank you alexia thanks so much